Hello, today we're going to talk about HM4 the Thunderbolt. This is a defining piece in our history. Why? First of all, because it was probably the most ambitious and crazy product we ever created in those days. It came out in 2010. It was the piece which we were the most terrified of. We were absolutely sure, and I was absolutely sure, nobody would have the guts to wear this piece. And when we launched it, a miracle happened. Phones started ringing, emails started coming in, people saying, I want that watch. And the piece we were most terrified of never ever stayed in a retail store. We crafted 25 movements a year over four years. There were 100 movements but planned because the amortization of such an incredibly complex movement is enormous. So what is HM4? It's inspired by an airplane, but it didn't start his life as an airplane. Actually, if you look at the different drawings that I've done over the years with my friend Eric Giraud, you're gonna see that it started off his life as a more or less flat watch with the balance wheel and two dials which were at an angle. And then they're more and more at an angle. And then we brought them forward. And then one day I told Eric, I mean, this is just a design. I'm not interested in the design. Why don't we do two reactors? And from there started the Thunderbolt. First of all, we had to already find how we're gonna case a movement like this. There's no way you can plonk a movement in a base and then close it. So it's actually a case made out of three parts. One very, very complex titanium block here, an incredible block of sapphire there, and it takes about 150 hours to machine that block before you actually polish it. So a month to do one block and another block of titanium and you basically slide the movement in and then come and put the front and with these screws, these are not decorative, these screws are actually closing the watch and making it water resistant. Central balance wheel, visible. I wanted to see the balance wheel and you're gonna see in the whole story of MBNF my complete obsession with balance wheels and escapements. And then we send the information in the right and in the left. On the right, you've got the hours and minutes vertically and on the left, you've got the power reserve indicator. These are the crowns. People think it's only aesthetic. Things are never only aesthetic at MBNF. This is actually the winding crown. While this is the crown to change the time. To our knowledge, this is the first movement ever, which is flat and then sending the information vertically. It was done with what you call in French, renvoi d'angle and then a few years later on HM6, we did it with conical gears. Like in every MBNF, the movement has been designed and engineered to fit completely the case. So if you look at that movement, it looks like an airplane itself. One of the biggest difficulties is that you've got the escapement here in the middle and you have to send the information so far away. We're not used to that in watchmaking. Everything is so compact. Here you have to go to the right, to the left, and make it completely precise. The HM4 is a big watch, but it's actually very easy to wear. I've got a very small wrist, and when I create something, it has to be comfortable for me. How do we manage that? The strap starts really just from the back, and in front, the lugs are actually a little bit mobile, and they're perfect just to close and feel snug and comfortable on your wrist. 